Meantime, the cities of Dallas and Fort Worth, they are both watching boarding homes. And they estimate there might be more than 300 in the two cities combined. And what's more, they account for a lot of complaints. Andrea Lucia takes a look at the possible solutions for you. In the span of a year, Fort Worth police received more than 230 calls to a group of just over a dozen boarding homes housing elderly and disabled tenants. They documented locked refrigerators, blocked passageways, and cluttered, crowded conditions. I think you would have to be a very cold individual to walk into that room or those homes and see how these people are living and think that that's okay. Fort Worth Council Member Elizabeth Beck helped push through a new ordinance last week to regulate boarding homes here for the first time. It's a regional issue and we want to make sure that as we regulate them here in Fort Worth, it doesn't push them out to smaller cities or um, other cities in the Metroplex. The city of Dallas already regulates boarding homes, but it told me it still receives between 15 to 20 complaints a week, often about the living conditions. City staff have asked council to pass an ordinance requiring a higher standard of operators. Who are basically slumlords who are, who are continuing to get away with slaps on the wrist. A committee today voted to recommend city council mandate boarding homes post notice of tenants rights and offer, among other things, access to a stove, microwave and suitably sized refrigerator. It, it is it's troubling. I'm just going to tell you, it is very troubling. Council member Carolyn King Arnold says it can be difficult to address boarding home abuse because of the overlapping roles different levels of government play. Finding a solution, she says, may take more cooperation. The better uh, fix is that we come to an agreement, federal, state, and city, on what, how we can better serve individuals who have certain needs. Andrea Lucia, CBS 11 News.